Now before we start, I'm going to do one thing that's going to make our life a little bit easier, and that's using symmetry. So we have our document menu over here. So if you, again, if you double click these dividers, you can open up these little side palettes here. We're going to take this document menu, click that white button, and then let's take the transform menu, grab that white dot, and just drag it right over here to the left. And right here, you're going to see an activate symmetry button. Now luckily, if you hover over this, you're going to see activate symmetry. The hotkey for that is X. So while we're activating symmetry, we're going to need to talk a little bit about axes. So we've already talked about your main components that make up an object. That's your vertices, your edges, and your faces. And there's one more really important concept when it comes to 3D. And we touched on that earlier just a, just a bit. But basically, if we turn on our floor, and by default up here we see have an X, Y, and a Z right here on our floor. And then by default, Y is on. Y is representing the actual floor that like you would go and sit on. It's the bottom plane right here. That's your Y floor plane. And in 3D, you have three axes. You have an X axis, which goes from negative to positive this way. And that's that red line. And that's essentially left to right. You also have this blue line here. That represents your Z axis. So Z forward is positive, And then Z negative is to the back of the object here. And you can't see it in this instance, but I'll go ahead and overlay it in the video. You have a Y axis, which is green, and that goes straight up and straight down. And you're going to see that's why this floor plane is green. And if I go through here and turn on X, that's red. And then Z is blue. So you get a little bit of color representation here. So generally speaking, in ZBrush and programs like Maya, it's Z forward and then Y up. And in terms of a head, if you look at our cam view here, Z forward means that's the way our object is going to be facing is this blue line is Z forward. And then Y up is towards the top of the head. And then X is side to side. So when I say activate symmetry and I hit the X key to activate symmetry, what essentially it's doing is by default activating symmetry in the X axis, which again is left and right. So now when I hover over my object, I have a little cursor and you're going to see on the left hand side, there's a corresponding dot on the right hand side. And if I go over here to the right hand side, there's a corresponding dot on the left hand side. So if I start sculpting right now, and I have the snake hook brush selected, let's go uh, B, S, T for our standard brush. And we start sculpting on one side, you're going to see the action is going to be repeated on the other. This makes it a lot easier and a lot faster to make things that are split down the middle, like a human being, or any number of things that have bilateral symmetry. Now, let's go ahead and undo that. Let's talk a little bit more about symmetry. While we have a sphere on our canvas, let's go ahead and turn off polyframes so you can see this a little bit better as well. So we have symmetry in the x-axis. We know that's left to right, negative x to positive x. Hit Control-Z to undo. Let's also turn on y. So now we have left and right, and like we said before, y is up and down. So now we have symmetry in the left and right axis, or the positive and negative x axis, and the positive and negative y axis. If we go over here and turn on Z, let's hit Control-Z to undo. Now we have axis symmetry in front to back, top to bottom, and left to right. Now to make this more obvious, you can do this one at a time. And again, by default, when you activate symmetry in ZBrush, they'll activate it in the X axis, because usually speaking, like, You'll have an object and you're making something like a butterfly or a beetle or a human where you can go through here and you can start sculpting on the left and right axis. You can go through here, you put a little nose and a little mouth. And again, because you have X symmetry turned on, you can make something that's symmetrical down or across the X axis. If we undo all that and we turn off X and we turn on Y, now it's going to be symmetrical in the up and down plane. Or turn on Z, and it's going to be symmetrical in the front to back plane. So up here you can see our head. This is the front of our head. This is the back of our head. So if this is the front, this is the back. We have symmetry in the front and the back. Generally speaking, we usually just have axis symmetry across the x-axis if you're doing things like humans. Of course, you can turn on or off any number of these. And if you want to toggle it off, just hit X on your keyboard. Now, don't confuse that with toggling on X symmetry. If you go through here and you turn on Y symmetry, 
and you tap X, it's going to turn activate symmetry off. It's just turning this button on or off. But now, when it's on, when we hit X to turn it on, Y is going to be the symmetrical axis. So if you do want X symmetry, let's go ahead and hit Control Z to back out of the undos, just make sure X is turned on and Y is off. Now there's another kind of symmetry you can do in here, and that's radial symmetry. That's what this R button is. So if we turn on R with X symmetry and we have a radial count of 8, when we come over here you're going to see we have symmetry again in the X axis left to right, but now we have 8 points all over our object. So when we start sculpting we're going to have axis symmetry 8 times around this in the X axis. So you can use this to your advantage to make all sorts of cool stuff. And remember you can go through here and sculpt uh, and symmetrical radial symmetry. Of course just like our other symmetry here you can turn off X and turn on Y and now we have symmetry in the Y axis so top to bottom or turn that off, turn on Z, now it's in the front to back. Or of course you can do multiple, you can turn on X and Y, or you can turn on X, Y, and Z, and you can very quickly have symmetry in all axes. Again, generally speaking with radial symmetry, probably you're just going to choose uh, one axis, and in this case I'm just going to choose Y symmetry with a radial count so I can go top to bottom and let's make our draw size even bigger. We can go through here and we can kind of sculpt out a shape here. Let's go ahead and, if you remember from our earlier videos, if you just draw on your mesh, that's going to do a positive or bump out effect with the standard brush. Because we have Z add selected by default with standard brush. If you hold down Alt, that'll switch to kind of a carve in. So you can kind of use this as like a clay turntable. And again, if you hold down shift, that'll smooth. So very quickly, you can kind of create a very nice effect like that. Now, we only have a radio count of eight. So if we go through here, we hold down alt, and we kind of punch in a little bit, you can see we'll get eight little holes all around here. Let's go ahead and hit control Z to undo that. You can also drop this down, so you can drop it down to say four or five. And now when we go through here, We'll have five, one, two, three, four, five. Or you can make it even higher. You can again you can just just like with any other slider, you can tap the slider, type in a number like sixteen, and now you can go through here and you've got sixteen lines. Now if you want to, you can take this radio count and crank it all the way up. There's gonna be a hundred lines, and now you can very quickly go through here and start holding down shift to smooth. And again, you can change your brushes. So we've already used a couple. We can go to like BSH for snake hook and go through here and start pulling these things around. Pulling down shift to smooth and getting all sorts of cool shapes going. Now, like we discussed earlier, if you turn on polyframe and some of these polygons are starting to get a little bit stretched, you know, this isn't going to be very good to sculpt on. So if I switch back to my standard brush, BST, It'll sculpt fine down here, but as I get up here, there's not any polygons in here. So we can go back in here to Geometry, turn on Dynamesh, turn off Blur, turn Blur down to zero. This re-Dynamesh, we got new geometry here, we can turn off Polyframe, and now whenever we make a major change, we can just control drag and it'll re-update our geometry. So now we can go through here and make all sorts of crazy changes. Just control drag out in our canvas and that'll go ahead and re-Dynamesh our object. So let's use a standard brush on this one spot. Again, we're kind of shearing that geometry, but control drag out here. We got brand new geo in there, and now we can go through here and continue sculpting. Now, like we discussed before, if you want to save this, you want to keep working on this, what you can do, you can go up here to Tool, Save As. I'm just going to throw this right here on my desktop. And now that we've saved that out, I can actually take this undo slider and go all the way back to the beginning. Or I can just leave this here ready for me to start working on and I can go back in here to our palette, choose a Sphere 3D Primitive, go to Make Poly Mesh 3D, tap X to turn on symmetry across the X axis. Let's go ahead and navigate so we're looking straight at our object here. And finally, what we've been talking about forever is we're able to go through here. Let's go down here to Geometry, 
turn off blur down to zero, resolution at 128 is fine, turn on Dynamesh, and now we can go through here and start sculpting our head.